Hey, hello. Welcome to Grand Rounds in Urology. I'm Mark Moyed, and I get to run or direct or I don't know what the heck I do with the wellness <laughs> section. All I know is I find great people to interview and we keep it exciting. We keep it interesting and we always end the interview off. How does this affect your life and your practice and how does this make patient care better? And that's what we're going to do. So I have two sessions with Dr. T. Higano, internationally known been practicing for decades out there, a part of all the big phase three trials. If you want to read her 85 page bio, go ahead, but we've only picked the very best to interview. So that says enough. I do two sessions with her. The first one's going to be on this one, bone health and ADT. And the second one is on brain cognition healthy, where we talk about heart health equals brain cognition healthy. You'll see that one coming up also. So, okay, Dr. Regano, welcome. Hey. Hey, How are you? <laughs> good, good. Been on the circuit off and on with her for about 30 years. Um, also just fun to talk to. Great to have a beer or essentially a soda with or a bottled water. Or can't say bottle. Or you can't, say bottle. You can't say plastic water. Okay. Here is the article I want to talk to you about and why we're talking today. This was in JAMA Network Open. This was from MD Anderson researchers. Here's the finding of a cohort study of almost 55,000 just released older men with prostate cancer, initiated ADT, and a whopping, a whopping 7.9% received DEXA screening. A whopping. This is from 2005 to 2015. But what they also found was that the very small men that received it, it apparently was associated with a decreased risk of developing a major osteoporotic fracture. So this is the one that's getting a lot of hate. We didn't even hit 10% here. So here's my argument. Everyone wants to talk to me about calcium and vitamin D deficiency. Here's what I want to talk to you about. The real deficiency going on with ADP is a deficiency of DEXA. That's a DEXA deficiency, less than 10%. What say you? We have plenty of time. Walk us through. Is this real? If do less than 10% of men really get a DEXA screen on ADT when they're initiating it? Well, uh, that's what the paper says. So I guess we have to believe it. I, in my practice, no, it's nowhere near that low. I mean, but listen, we've known about this for years, the need to monitor bone density in men going on ADT. And the only way to really do it is to get a baseline. You need to know where you start, right? Thank you. And in fact, literally, I have sometimes delayed starting ADT in someone where it wasn't crucial until I got somebody started on some kind of bone health agent with calcium and vitamin D. And we can talk about that later if you want, but I mean, it, it's really important. So is everybody in your practice or in the past, is everybody who's being initiated or getting ADT, they are getting a DEXA or are you more selective or is just a pan policy? Anybody who gets ADT gets DEXA. Well, pretty much in my mind, it's a pan policy. Um, you know, when you have uh, somebody who's going to be on a bone health agent anyway, because of castration resistant prostate cancer that's metastatic, that might be less important there because you're then you're going to be or then you're supposed to be giving them a bone health agent monthly to prevent skeletal related events. But um, so that might be the one time where I, I might forego that. Yeah. Because you know we're going to give something anyway. It's the ones where you know you know you need to decide: Are you going to add something else to their therapy? And that's, it's really important to do that. So if everybody's getting a baseline DEXA mm -hmm. in the dream world, when do they get another one? Do they get it a year later, a year and a half later? I mean, when, six months, if you had your druthers, when should someone get another one? I do it a year later. A year later. Yeah. Now, okay. you know, that's not engraved in stone, but, but in fact, when we had a clinical trial, what we would do is, and this was with intermittent therapy, we would do the repeat DEXA from baseline at the end of uh, their ADT. So in, in that trial, it was nine months. But the reason we were doing it that way is because we were looking at whether stopping ADT, like what was the, what did the bone density do during off treatment interval? 
And so that's why we did it that way. But I think if this person is on continuous ADT, I think is a year is a good mark. It gives you a, a sense of how fast the person is losing bone density if you didn't start them on something already, or even if you did. I mean, yeah. you want to catch it earlier. Yeah, I, I think what gets missed is, is the low amount of radiation too that comes from a DEXA. Some argue it's 10, 20% that of a chest X-ray. I mean, it, we're talking... I can't, I don't know another device that gives off so little to no radiation. Well, it, there, there's no fasting, there's no IVs. Your it's opponent. simple, you lie on a table. I mean, I've had a num number of them myself. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a big deal for the patient. That's, that's the amazing thing. Whereas, you know, some of these people ordering QCTs, I think this is a problem. Ah, that's my last point on this uh -huh. So... The other option that people get in selective parts of the United States is called QCT. Now that's not cheap. It's a lot of radiation. And the reason it's getting a lot of controversy lately is it tends to actually overestimate what the people are arguing is it's overestimating the problem and putting everybody and their grandma and grandpa on bone drugs and some of who don't need it. Is that okay. true? Are you having the same problems with people getting or the QCT problems, DEX is good enough, right? People don't need to spend yes. this kind of money. No, no. So the thing I think about DEC, uh, QCT is, QCT was developed, I think at UCSF, um, for research purposes. Huh. Okay, so, so it could be that maybe that's a part of the country where they're using a lot of these, but I mean, there's several things. Even the people at UCSF, say, look, this is a research tool. The gold mm. standard is a DEXA scan. That I is the gold say. standard. First of all, the QCT is, what it does is it, it, it's a great evaluator of the trabecular bone, you know, the spongy stuff. Yeah. Whereas the DEXA scan looks at both the cortical bone as well as the trabecular bone. And, uh -huh. you know, the cortical bone is what's important, more important in terms of fracture, whereas a QCT, you know, if you're doing research and you want to know if your intervention is having an early impact on trabecular bone, that's fine. But that's not what we're doing in clinical practice. We are trying to evaluate the risk for fracture. That is so interesting that you say that, because that's exactly how people were arguing it back and forth. It says this is overestimating it. It's only looking at the trabecular bone, the inside part. It's not looking at the outside parts. DEXA does both quite well. DEXA is not expensive, but no. here's the final catch of my interview. People are saying that in urology and other places, the reimbursement's so poor for DEXA that a lot of people that used to have DEXA machines have tossed them. Exactly. Is that true? That's ridiculous. Yeah, of course it's true because it has to do with money. I mean, they can get more for doing QCTs in their offices than they can doing DEXs, which is really, that is not a patient-centric approach, in my opinion. I mean, because of the radiation, because of the cost. I mean, so, so I mean, I don't know who's doing this, but it's clearly, it's clearly the business man position, not the physician position. I mean, it's regionally and mostly it's DEXA everywhere, but there are regions of the country where whether it's people have the notion that it's somehow better or I don't know, maybe it's more expensive, like you say, the reimbursement, but it's still out there. And uh, I just well, find it interesting that the main message today is DEXA is the real deficiency when it comes to bone health. Exactly. I, I, I would love to tell you, I think it's calcium. Because and vitamin D, but I, I found the latest report on calcium in the United States. And the average daily dietary calcium from the latest report is over a thousand milligrams a day from men and women. It drops off a little bit when you get older, but maybe maybe I've messed up too. Maybe the big deficiency with ADT, maybe the D in ADT stands for the deficiency Dexa. of DEXA. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. I, no. No. I think I think that's a fantastic point. And if I were going to prioritize. Uh, based on what you've educated me about calcium and calcium um, enhancement in foods these days. So do I prioritize calcium supplementation versus DEXA scan? I'll go with DEXA any day. I did. That's what I, that's the conclusion I've come up to in talking with you in these papers. I used to be so excited about vitamin D and calcium because that's my world. But the reality is this is the big deficiency going on is the DEXA. And, you know, 
I hate to say this. This is my last point. I don't know how you feel, but if someone's not going to cover it and somebody wants it every year, it's not that expensive. No. I mean, out of pocket DEXA, in, in terms of what people are paying for certain pills and other things that we talk about, the gym memberships, you name it. The reality is from my world, you can do the calcium D, you can do all the exercises that Moya and everyone else tells you to do. But these men, many of these men still lose a lot of bone, even though they're listening to everything that you say. Right. And the, and the, and the final thing I think I would say is the older the patient, the more at risk he's going to be for pre-existing osteopenia osteoporosis, because we know that's natural history in men who aren't going to go on ADT, right? So yeah. These yeah. are all important things to take into account. This is awesome. So we leave with three things and you agree with me. One, there's a DEXA deficiency going on. Two, yeah. you can change that deficiency by encouraging people to get it in your practice or someone else's practice. And three, there's too much emphasis still on QCT and ADT when the emphasis should be on DEXA. Are those three great points to sell? Yes, fantastic. And then the final point I would make is I don't think that the reimbursement system should favor uh, financially a test that's not the gold standard. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Dr. Higano, you are awesome. That is fabulous. That's why this is the best section in Grand Rounds in Urology. <laughs> None of the other ones touch it. Thank you. All right. I'll see you for the cognitive health discussion on next okay. time. Thank you. All right. See you there. <laughs> Bye now. Bye.